हम लोग यहाँ रखे उसके साथ देखें सुंदर जरा साफ करना वहां रखे देखें ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है राइट इसमें लाइट्स आप इसको क्लोज कर दिया पहले का और लाइट्स आप हाँ हेलो हेलो यस सर यू कैन स्टार्ट इस सेशन नाउ आ यू 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 डोंट हैव एनी फॉर्मल इंट्रोडक्शन एंड इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ़ द टॉपिक रिकॉर्डिंग दिस इज दाइव स्टार्टिंग ओके So hi friends good evening to all of you i am dr surikant currently professor and head department of respiratory medicine at king george's medical university lucknow and uh, i also have been the president of all three important respiratory societies of india that is i am the past president of indian chest society past president of indian college of allergy asthma and applied immunology and past president of national college of chest physician india and uh, today it's my proud privilege to share my some views and thoughts on very important topic that is community acquired pneumonia so now i'm sharing my ppt <clears throat> okay so Uh, this is uh, a live webinar on community of pneumonia organized by the IJCP group that is the very important and very oldest uh, academic group founded by late dr kk agarwal the past president of ima and uh, he has been the mentor of so many uh, medical personnel in this country including me and uh, now i'm starting the topic so first coming to the epidemiology of pneumonia epidemiology means what is the state of morbidity and mortality due to the disease 
So this accounts for 3.5 million deaths each year globally and the highest cause of mortality among all infectious diseases. So it's a very important disease as far as the mortality data globally is concerned. Now, what is the scenario in India? If you see the incidence of pneumonia, means cases of pneumonia per year, then around 25 cases per 10,000 adults per year. This is the Indian morbidity per year incidence of pneumonia in India. And this is the overall incidence. If you see the age-wise profile of this disease, then the patient between the 65 to 79 of years of age, they are having higher incidence that is 63 per 10,000 adults per year. And if you see more elderly people that is more than 80 years of age, the uh, incidence goes even higher, that is 164.3 per 10,000 per 10,000 adults per year. And if you see the children population, then India, nearly 6 lakh 30,000 children less than five years age die due to acute respiratory infections, mainly due to lower respiratory tract infection like pneumonia. So pneumonia is a major health problem globally as well as in our country, and it's a major infectious killer in children in elderly. Now, if you see uh, what is the mortality rate if the patient coming and you are treating him as an outpatient, means the disease is not so severe, you are uh, prescribing the treatment on OPD basis, then mortality is roughly around 5%. If the patient condition is severe and patient needs hospitalization, then mortality goes higher, that is 10%. And if the patient requires intensive care unit facility, means disease is too much severe, then the mortality goes is still higher up, that is more than 30%. Now, this is the screenshot from the Indian guidelines for the diagnosis and management of community acquired pneumonia developed by the joint uh, effort of two important association, Respiratory Association of India, that is Indian Chess Society and National College of Chess Physicians in India, and they gave this recommendation. So this is a very important document for all those medical fraternity people. If really, you really want to have the Indian scenario and Indian guidelines, then you can go through this document. And this document was published in both uh, national journals, that is Lung India, as well as the Indian Journal of Chest Disease and Allied Sciences. And I was part of these guidelines. So what is the definition of the uh, community of acquired pneumonia? So Infectious Disease Society of America, uh, that is the most acceptable definition. This defines community acquired pneumonia as an acute infection of the pulmonary parenchyma that is associated with at least some symptoms of acute infection accompanied by the presence of an acute infiltrate on a chest radiograph or auscultatory findings consistent with pneumonia, such as altered breath sounds and or localized rails in a patient not hospitalized or residing in a long-term care facility for more than 14 days before onset of symptoms. So that is the consensus definition of pneumonia. Now, what type of pneumonia you have? So basically, the classification of pneumonia includes the community-acquired pneumonia. We will explain what is what do you mean by community-acquired pneumonia, or it can be nosocomial pneumonia. That can be of two types, hospital-acquired pneumonia, or can be the ventilator-associated pneumonia, commonly known as VAP or HAP. So now coming one by one. So pneumonia is frequently categorized based on site of acquisition also. And what classification we have learned, now we are uh, coming with the details of this classification. So what is community acquired pneumonia? This refers to an acute infection of the pulmonary parenchyma acquired outside of the hospital, means in the community, and that's why it is called community acquired pneumonia. Nosocomal pneumonia refers to an acute infection of the pulmonary parenchyma acquired in the hospital setting and um, encompass, encompasses both hospital acquired pneumonia, that is HAP or HAP, and ventilator-associated pneumonia, that is called VEP. And HEP, again, that is hospital-acquired pneumonia, again, defined as the pneumonia, which is acquired within or more than 48 hours after hospital admission. Once hospitalized, and this pneumonia is developing after 48 hours. The ventilator-associated pneumonia, or VEP, refers to pneumonia acquired equal to more than 48 hours after endotracheal intubation. So this is the 
uh, these are the details of understanding of various pneumonia. Now, coming to our today's topic of discussion, that is community acquired pneumonia. And this is the winter season. Today is the 17th January. And cold chill wave is going on, especially in the northern India, in the hilly area. And roughly whole of the country is uh, shivering and having a lot of uh, cold uh, manifestation of health. And most important is the community acquired pneumonia. So what are the factors of community acquired pneumonia? Number one, infection of the lung parenchyma. So what is pneumonia? It is the infection of the lung parenchyma associated with signs and symptoms of acute infection. That is acute fever, acute onset of disease, presence of acute infiltrates on chest X-ray, auscultatory finding consistence with consolidation. We will uh, have the idea of all these later on. And in a patient not hospitalized or residing in a uh, long-term care health facility, for more than two weeks prior. Now coming, what are the causative organisms responsible for this very important infection, lower respiratory tract infection, that is community acquired pneumonia. So streptococcal pneumonia is the main culprit, main bug, I can say 35% pneumonia, community acquired pneumonia are responsible because of the streptococcal pneumonia infection. Next is the Staph aureus, especially in the children, 23% pneumonia as basically attributed uh, to the community acquired pneumonia. Klebsiella pneumonia, 21%, and Haemophilus influenza, 9%, and other bugs can be responsible in 12% of cases. Now, what are the risk factors for community acquired pneumonia? Means who are more vulnerable for developing this community acquired pneumonia? So number one is the age, age 65 and older, or this can be children less than five years or six years of age. So two age groups, extreme age group are the risk factor. While in this winter condition, the usually children are inside the home. Uh, the elderly, they are having habit of morning walk. And that's why elderly 65 and older, they are more vulnerable for community acquired pneumonia. And that's why it is recommended that in uh, this season, especially in uh, cold winters and chilly winters, the people should not have the morning walk. They should walk when the sun, sun is, uh, of course, time is there. The second condition is uh, the all patients of chronic diseases, for example, chronic illness like lung disease, chronic lung disease, chronic heart disease, chronic liver disease, or chronic kidney diseases, asthma, diabetes, hypertension, or cancer. So diseases like these, the, the patients, they are also having more vulnerability for developing community acquired pneumonia. And conditions that weaken the immune system of the body like HIV, AIDS, and cancer, and so many other diseases. And cigarette smoking is especially risk factor for developing pneumonia. And here I would like to mention that when somebody smokes, the 30% of the smoke goes inside their lungs, uh, his lung, or the rest of the 70% uh, smoke, this goes to the friends, colleagues, who are in the near vicinity of this smoker, or this remain in the environment as an environmental tobacco smoke. And the smoke, which of course you inhale as a passive smoking, is also equally harmful to active smoking. So what is pathogenesis and pathology of pneumonia? So if you see the mode of transmission for this, the most common route of transmission is inhalation. So most common route of spread is the for the community acquired pneumonia is the inhalation route. Infectious particle is smaller than yeah. smaller than five micron can transport up to hundred microorganism depending on bacterial size. Or Okay. And second most important route is the aspiration. Uh, micro particles less than or equal to 5 micron in size and microorganisms present in the upper airways are consist constantly exposed to lung tissue. And through micro aspiration of oropharyngeal secretions from the trachea can enter the airways. The risk factors are depressed cough reflex, altered consciousness, impaired mucociliary escalator system, and immunosuppression. The hematogenous spread is also an important uh, way of spread of the disease. And the bacterial translocation from the stomach can be the source 
and then direct extension from adjacent infected foci, for example, pulmonary tuberculosis. So tubercular pneumonia can also be the example of this direct extension. Now coming to the The pathogenesis part, after the uh, type of uh, root of spread of infection. So what is the pathogenesis? Invasion of pathogenic microorganism in the lung parenchyma. And second is the overgrowth of pathogen. That is another factor. And third is the breaking down of local defense mechanism. So defense mechanism is on one hand and basilary load is on another hand. And there is a tug of war between the basilary load and its pathogenesis and the local immunity as well as the general immunity of a host. And during this tug of war, if the basilary load and the pathogenesis induced by it is more or overpowered by the immune system, local immune system of the lung, as well as the general Im immunity, if it is infective power is more than, of course, it will result into the community acquired pneumonia, the disease process. And if your immunity is overpowered uh, by the basilary load or the infective process, then of course, there is no infection or no community fire pneumonia. So pneumonia is ultimately the result of the infection and the power of immunity of a host. If immune is host, immune ho if immunity of the host is very good, then of course infection will occur, but it will not result into the pneumonia. If the in immunity of the host is poor, then of course, infection will occur and develop into the community acquired pneumonia. And what is pneumonia? It is ultimately the development of the inflammatory intra alveolar exudates. And that's why alveoli get filled with the such exudates. And that's why the term consolidation has been given to such a state when alveoli are filled with these exudates. Now you can see here, this first cut section is the normal alveolus where air is going in and out and there is a gaseous section. And in consolidation, when the alveoli get filled with the exudates, then second picture look like this filled with inflammatory cells and exudates and that's why air cannot pass. And that's why patient started having dyspnea or breathlessness. Now, pathologically, there are four stages of consolidation. What is that? What are these? The four stages, all stages may be seen at the same time in different areas. So at some part, one stage is going on, another part, another stage is going on like this. The first stage is called a stage of congestion, where congestion of the vessels with alveolar exudation with proteinaceous material, neutrophilic material, and this is, stands only for one to two days, first one to two days. The second stage is called a stage of red hepatization, that is intra-alveolar exudation, especially with RVCs, that is two to four days. So next two to four days are the stage of red hepatization. Uh, the, uh, it, calls, it, it is called red hepatization because majority of the inflammatory exudate cells are the RVCs. And third stage is called a stage of gray hepatization, where the exudation is mainly of WBCs and Minimal RBC, RBCs and that is stand for next four to seven days. It is called gray hepatization because of the, uh, of course, presence of the white blood cells. A stage of resolution is usually the last stage. The exudate is absorbed or removed by the macrophages and proteolytic enzyme, which occurs over three weeks. And that is how you have around four to six weeks of cycle of the pneumonia, the stage of pneumonia for first two days, the stage of congestion for two first two days, the stage of red hepatization next two to four days, the stage of gray hepatization next four to seven days, and the stage of re resolution next three weeks. So four to six weeks of various stages of pneumonia, which is the usual routine cycle of pneumonia. Coming to the clinical presentation after pathogenesis, pathology, what are the clinical manifestations? Fever is the most important manifestation of pneumonia. And this is associated, fever is associated with, usually fever is high grade, acute presentation, associated with chills and rigors, cough, pleuritic chest pain. So what is this pleuritic chest pain? Very important. You see chest pain, you can have the central chest pain, which may be due to upper GI problem. You can have precordial chest pain on left side, that is because of cardiac problem. You can have vague chest pain because of a skeletal muscular region. You can have the 
epigastric chest pain because of GERD. And you can have lateral chest pain aggravated by deep breath. It is called the pleuritic chest pain. So lateral chest pain on the side of pneumonia is characterized by the site is lateral chest pain. And it is a very sharp, severe cutting and piercing type of chest pain and which get increased during deep breath, coughing, yawning, or any maneuver where you increase the intra-abdominal intra pressure or intrathoracic pressure. So this is called pleuritic chest pain. Then, of course, it may be associated in some cases as headache, sometimes vomiting and diarrhea also, abdominal pain also, and joint pain also, and muscular pain. Now, what is the difference? Now, there is two terms, typical pneumonia and atypical pneumonia. Very famous terminology in the medical fraternity. What is this typical pneumonia and what is atypical pneumonia? So, typical pneumonia is usually associated with acute fever, chills, pleuritic chest pain, and productive cough. Common bacteriological uh, pathogens responsible for typical pneumonia include streptococcal pneumonia, hemophilus influenza, staph aureus, Klebsiella, group A streptococci, aerobic gram-negative bacteria, for example, antibacteriosis such as Klebsiella or and Shirishia coli, microphilic bacteria, and aerobes associated with respiration most of the time. While atypical pneumonia is usually associated with myalgias. So means more extra pulmonary manifestation with atypical pneumonia like myalgias. Fever without chills, that's abnormal fever. Usually fever is most of the fever they are associated with chills. Headache and unproductive cough. Involvement of extra pulmonary uh, symptoms like uh, uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or so many other uh, extra pulmonary symptoms. Microorganism causing atypical community acquired pneumonia include the Mycoplasma pneumonia, Lesionella, Chlamydia uh, pneumonia, and Chlamydia cytosine. Now, coming to the typical bacterial pneumonia. So, most of the more than 80% cases of pneumonia we face as a typical bacterial pneumonia or the common uh, uh, typical community acquired pneumonia. So usually you will get the history of previously healthy and sudden onset of fever and shortness of breath. Physical signs and symptoms are usually present fever, tachycardia, tachypnea, productive cough with purulent sputum and possible hemoptysis also in some cases. Pallor and cyanosis and localized signs of dullness to percussion in decreased breath sound. Crepitations, ronchi, egophony, and uh, change of the crepitations with the coughing. Investigations include chest X-ray, which show the lobar consultation. So usually, the common bacterial community-acquired pneumonia has a lobar presentation. What is what do you mean by lobar presentation? You you know, anatomically, the right lung has got three lobes, left has two lobes. So any particular lobe is infected, then of course, usually it is labeled as community-acquired pneumonia, and usually causes streptococcal pneumonia. So chest X-ray showing the lobar consultation, CBC chest complete blood count showing leukocytosis, and the sputum sample contains neutrophils, RBCs, gramistin, may be positive depending upon the causative organism. Atypical pneumonia, while there is no lobar pneumonia, usually uh, patchy infiltrates are there, minimal sputum production, and low-grade fever in comparison to the high-grade fever, sore throat is, intractable cough is there, able to continue the work, so not too much ill. No sick uh, contacts, recent travel, or evidence of altered immune system. Uh, and of course, the uh, mild ill as appearing patient with diffuse diffu uh, wheezes on lung examination. So, ronchi may also be present. Primary care physician prescribe empirical antibiotic for community acquired pneumonia with complete resolution. Uh, this is called walking pneumonia syndrome when the pneumonia occurs in a different situation. On examination. Now, this is very important slide for all my dear friends. What you will get on inspection as a MBBS final year student or MD student or the DNB student or a uh, practitioner, what will you get on inspection? What is on palpation? What is on percussion? And what is on auscultation? In the inspection, on the inspection, and before that, what you will get on general examination or vital examination. On vital examination, you will find respiratory rate increase, blood pressure in variable, temperature febrile, pulse tachycardia is common. And on inspection, you will get decreased overlying movement, chest expansion and symmetry is diminished on the affected side, 
vocal fremitus increase on the affected side. Dullness to percussion, impaired percussion note is found on percussion. And a stage of congestion, in a stage of course, congestion, the auscultation will reveal fine crepitations. A stage of rat hepatization and gray hepatization, you will uh, feel, you will see tubular bronchial breathing. You will hear tubular bronchial breathing. A stage of resolution, you will see coarse crepitations. And plural fiction rub is heard in about 10% of cases during acute stages. Now, after examination, what investigation will you do? So, test radiograph, obviously, routine blood investigation, oxygen saturation by pulse oximetry, arterial blood gas analysis of oxygen saturation equal to less than 90%, patient of COPD, sputum specimen, gram stain and culture, AFB, CB net, liquid culture, fungal element, fungal center can also have RT-PCR, true net or COVID-19. This is uh, still available in protocol as per the government policy and it, this should be done. Now, additional test. Why you require additional to rule out the atypical pneumonia? So, blood culture in certain diagnostic dilemma you may require, especially in the hospitalized patient. Plural fluid for a specific pathogen, if the patient presenting with associated plural fusion also. Induced sputum in or in bronchial level lavas fluid, pneumocystis carina pneumonia. Serological testing for antibody titer, for example, mycoplasma, for example, chlamydia, for example, coxella, or other atypical organism for which serological testing is available. Now, every tertiary care center and even district care, uh, district level, all these uh, tests are antibody titer are available for the atypical pneumonia. Serum a urine antigen for streptococcus pneumonia, a urinary antigen test for Legionella, and direct uh, fluorescence sense antibody test for Legionella, and nasopharyngeal swab specimen for Legionella. These special investigations should also be done whenever there is a doubt of atypical pneumonia. Now, how you manage? What is the treatment process? Now, treatment before starting the treatment, you must see how severe pneumonia is. And that's why you require a pneumonia severity score. And you will, if you see the literature, literature is full of a lot of pneumonia severity score. Well, I will go very simple pneumonia severity score, which we in the pneumonia guidelines, which we have advised, uh, commented, and of course mentioned in the Indian guidelines for pneumonia. What is that? That is called CURB 65. CURB 65 means C stands for confusion. And if it is present, the, you will give one point. BUN, that is blood urea nitrogen. If it is more than 7 millimol per meter, you will give one point of scoring. Respiratory rate, if equal to 30 or more than 30, you will give one point for scoring. Systolic blood pressure is less than 90 millimeter and or diastolic blood pressure is less than 60 millimeter of mercury, you will give one point. And age is if more than 65, you will give one point. And if you do the total of these points, depending upon the situation, if the score is 0 to 1, this is patient which can be treated on OBD basis and mortality rate is 0.7 to 2.1 percent. If the score is 2, then of course it requires inpatient treatment that is hospitalization in the ward and mortality rate is roughly 10 percent, 9.2 percent. And if the score is 2 to 4, then of course the, it requires ICU hospitalization and mortality rate is usually 15 to 40 percent. Now, so the question comes, after assessment of the pneumonia severity, we will take the decision that where this patient should be treated, on OPD basis or hospitalized. They require hospitalization. If at all he requires hospitalization, then should it be hospitalized in the ward, general ward, or private ward, or it should be hospitalized, he should be hospitalized in the ICU setting. So depending upon the pneumonia score, we will decide. So. And we also look after whether this patient is having only disease pneumonia or having with, with or without comorbid condition like diabetes, hypertension, so many heart disease, lung disease, or with or without risk factor for pseudomonas because pseudomonal infection needs a special attention. Now, treatment of community acquired pneumonia after this evaluation of the pneumonia severity index, we have decided whether this should be treated on OPD basis or this patient requires outpatient with comorbid condition without comorbid condition, inpatient in hospitalization or inpatient treatment, inpatient in ICU, no risk for pseudomonas, inpatient in ICU with risk for pseudomonas. So come one by one. Now, what is the risk factor for pseudomonas infection? Yes, we should know that these are the risk factor for pseudomonas infection and directly we have to start the anti-pseudomonal antibiotic. So structural lung disease means already patient having chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis, 
post tubercular sequelae so many things are there if the structural lung disease is there use of broad spectrum antibiotic already there immunosuppression is diabetes or hiv there malignancy any cancer is there or prior to corticosteroid treatment malnutrition is there prior hospitalized uh, hospitalized admissions and rapid x ray spread so if these are the factors present then of course we will subject suspect for the pseudomonas as a causative organism for pneumonia now treatment of commonly acquired pneumonia according to the set now if the patient is fitting into the outpatient without comorbid condition so young healthy male or elderly male but no diabetes no hypertension no heart disease no kidney disease no liver disease no lung disease then of course this patient is of outpatient a treatment suitable patient because it is not having any comorbid condition so you start the oral beta lactamase amoxicillin 500 mg three times daily or you can start the oral macrolides that clomethromycin or azithromycin or you can start this oral coamoxiclab 625 thrice daily so depending upon the situation if the patient is having history of amoxicillin induced diarrhea you can start oral macrolides otherwise you can start amoxicillin or amoxicloid clavulanic acid so that is the first and basic situation now second situation is the outpatient treatment by patient is also having morbid condition again you will start the cubita lactamate antibiotic that is amoxicillin with or without clavulanic acid with mercurolide so you will combine both antibiotics the clavulanic that is the the beta lactam antibiotic that is amoxiclavulanic acid with the mercurolide that is azithromycin or clarithromycin usually we avoid the fluoroquinolone why usually we avoid fluoroquinolone because this patient also might be a case of tubercular pneumonia and fluoroquinolones are also anti tubercular in action in long term third situation is that patient require hospitalization so during hospitalization you will use the macrolide macrolide as i mentioned and preferred beta lactamate you use ceftriaxone ceftriaxone or coamoxiclab so it is your choice whatever you want or whatever the hospital availability is there a fourth situation is the patient require in icu setting hospitalization no risk for pseudomonas so you will use the beta lactamate plus macrolide or fluoroquinolone preferred beta lactamate can be the ceftriaxone ceftriaxone or coamoxiclab the last situation is that in patient icu requirement with the risk of pseudomonal then you will use the anti pseudomonal antibiotic like so you will use anti pneumococcal plus anti pseudomonal antibiotic for example cefepime ceftazidime cefepirazone uh, piperacillin tazobactam cefepirazone sulbactam imipenem or meropenem so that is the last situation the severe most situation so after this treatment what is the situation of how you uh, see antibiotic in overall management of pneumonia so these are the some principles of using antibiotics in pneumonia that is treat the bacterial infection only if it is covid pneumonia or viral pneumonia then please don't use antibiotics optimize diagnosis and severity assessment only diagnosis of community acquired pneumonia is not sufficient but you should must assess the patient according to the pneumonia severity index and you assess the patient whether require opd treatment indoor treatment or icu treatment or even anti pseudomonal antibiotic recognize local resistance prevalence you must know you are practicing in lucknow gorakhpur punjab haryana himachal jammu kashmir tamil nadu kerala which state you are prevailing and what is the local resistance prevalence of the various pathogens to the various antibiotics so and local antibiogram play a very important role in arriving the choice of decision of antibiotic utilize pharmacodynamics dynamics to choose most effective agents and doses integrate consider local resistance efficacy and maximum cost every should thing should be integrated prescribe empirically but intelligently so whenever you are taking a empirical decision consider all these things which i have mentioned encourage patient compliance it is not usually the prescription which cures the patient it is pa uh, patient adherence and the compliance that basically result into the better outcome so uh, idsa and ads 2019 guidelines they also recommend the same whatever we have advised in the indian guidelines so there is no need to repeat it 
Now, treatment choice, as we have already, uh, of course, we mentioned for streptococcal pneumonia uh, is different and uh, pseudomonas is different. What is the management algorithm? So in next slide, I'll summarize the whole story, which I have, uh, of course, from clinical presentation to the diagnosis to the treatment. So often with or without expectation, shortness of breath, pleuritic chest pain, uh, or fever, and fever, at least one systemic uh, feature is present, temperature more than 37. 7 degrees Celsius, chills and draggers present and or severe malaise present and new focal chest sign on examination, bronchial breath sound and or trackles with no other explanation for this illness. Consider for chest exograph. In chest x-ray, if there is a low bar or patchy consultation, loss of normal mediastinal cardiac or diaphragmatic cellar sign, uh, peripheral opacities or intestinal infiltrate with other causes of condition ruled out clinically, they are absent then consider alternative. If present, then consider pneumonia, atypical or atypical. If chest X radiograph uh, is not available, uh, then of course, uh, calculate the CRP because it's a simple clinical test. And if it is more than one or uh, it is less than one, if it is less than one, then check oxygen saturation using pulse oximeter. Oxygen saturation less than 92% is less than 50 years or oxygen saturation is less than 90% uh, is more than 50 years. I will not go into the simple formula I have kept. Just consider the magic number of oxygen saturation is 90%. If it is less than 90%, saturation is different. If it is more than 90%, you require outpatient department, less than 90% hospitalization. So if it is less than 90%, hospitalization should be done and test uh, radiograph uh, uh, should be done in do after hospitalization send sample for urea electrolyte full blood count blood culture gram stain and cultures antibi administer first antibiotic dose as empirical dose decide an icu or non icu admission criteria and then of course you admit according uh, you do according to and uh, the admission uh, uh, antibiotic choice as per the recommendation we have already mentioned and then, of course, it should, the patient should be monitored by LFT, KFT, etc. Now, how you can prevent the community acquired pneumonia? So what are the various factors for prevention of community acquired pneumonia? Good hygiene. And that's why our Prime Minister started the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan in 2014 when he became the first time Prime Minister. So, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan is a very important thing to have the uh, reducing the morbidity any kind of morbidity. Hand washing is a very good practice, which we have practiced during the COVID time and we should continue it. The smoking cessation, yes, the smoking uh, creates a lot of health problem and that's why smoking cessation should be promoted. If at all your patient is smoking, is still smoking, even after pneumonia, then you advise, please smoke, stop smoking. Again, you can develop pneumonia and so many other health hazards of smoking. And use of masks, the COVID has, you see mask is not only Preventing the COVID is also spreading, is stopping the spread of various infectious diseases like pneumonia and tuberculosis. Vaccination, the proper vaccination for all the respiratory patients. For my all asthma COPD patient, bronchitis patient, bronchitis patient, I used to prescribe five vaccinations. Five vaccinations for all respiratory patients. Influenza vaccination annually, pneumococcal vaccine as per guidelines, COVID vaccine as per protocol, Tdap vaccine, yes. Tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis, these are the latest recommendations from the various guidelines that should be done for a respiratory patient and varicella joster vaccination. These are the five vaccinations should be done for all patients of asthma, COPD, bronchitis, post-tubercular sequelae, and interstitial lung disease and lung cancer, so many other lung diseases. Optimization of all comorbid condition. If you want to really control pneumonia or prevent pneumonia, your diabetes, if the patient is diabetic, diabetes should be controlled. Your patient is hypertension, hypertension should be controlled. Every comorbid condition, if you have the optimized therapy, then of course, you are reducing the chances of developing pneumonia in that patient. So in nutshell, the most common community of pandemonia pathogens are streptococcal pneumonia and H. influenzae. Susceptibility of common respiratory pathogens remains high to amoxicillin globulinic acid. Mortality rate of pneumonia remains high among patients in ICU, but when treated with appropriate antibiotics, better outcome can be attained. And thank you very much for your attention. Any questions or queries, please welcome. Hello. Yes. Yes, I will be sharing some questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. just a minute, sir.
should i go into the chat box or you will speak the question no i will be sharing some questions no no you will be speaking the question or i have to search the chat box no i will be sharing the questions in the chat box so you can take one one by one all the questions सर आई शेयर द क्वेश्चंस। ओके, एक नंबर निकालो पहले। ओके, व्हाट परसेंटेज ऑफ पेशेंट्स हैव कॉज्ड बाय ए निमोनिया एंड ओनली टेन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट आर ए टिपिकल निमोनिया सो आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्चुअली प्रेजेंटेड द आंसर ड्यूरिंग माई डिस्कशन एनी वे so the which scoring system are used to assess the severity of pneumonia you see if you see the literature literature is full of various uh, pneumonia severity index but i am not going into the complicated one i have already given the curve 65 score system which is the simplest pneumonia severity score system and everybody should follow the third is what are the treatment options if pseudomonas is suspected in patient with community acquired pneumonia so anti pseudomonal antibiotics like meropenem imipenem cefaparazone salvectum and then piperacillin tetrabactam these are the usual choices for the anti pseudomonas and which extrapolatory finding suggest legionella community acquired pneumonia yes so legionella infection usually the uh, common acquired pneumonia pattern is not there so atypical fever is there not high grade fever and sometimes you may get so many extra pulmonary signs and uh, of course the uh, on chest x ray there is a patchy consolidation patchy infiltrates rather than the lobar consolidation so then you will suspect the legionella infection then of course next question is uh how do comorbid condition affect antimicrobial therapy selection for yes comorbidity affect because in during comorbid conditions the the you require a little bit higher antibiotics number one second is you also require the control of comorbid condition for example a diabetic patient is there and if you are not controlling the sugar then of course you will not your patient will not respond to the antibiotic and similarly if you are treating the co without comorbid with amoxicillin during with if with comorbid condition you will require co amoxy plus clavulanic acid so that is the difference without comorbid and with comorbid the next question is what are the uh oh last question na huh? what are the negative prognostic factors of community acquired pneumonia so age more than 65 age less than 5 so either 55 or bachpan either the patient is pediatric population or geriatric population so age is the criteria second the underlying lung condition if a patient is already having copd interstitial lung disease chronic bronchitis asthma post tubercular sequelae so this is another bad prognostic sign if the patient is having comorbid condition for example diabetes heart disease lung disease liver disease etc kidney disease another risk factor for the poor prognosis the negative prognosis is also present when patient is having hiv or some other immuno compromised state like cancer pro bad prognosis is there for a smoker so if the patient is a smoker the prognosis is bad bad prognosis is also when the pneumonia severity score is more bad prognosis is also if the patient is unconscious bad prognosis is also if the prolonged there is a prolonged hospitalization and the patient is not responding so these are the some factors which are the which are indicating the bad prognosis any other question So no any more questions here. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for your valuable time, sir. Okay. Sharing, Namaste to all. And sharing some important insights in a very good manner related to the topic, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.